Welcome back to It's Your Environment. My guest today is Mr. Pribno from uh, Port Wing and uh, formerly from Berlin, but really all over. Wherever there's a conservation challenge, Alan Pribno is there. And uh, how do I know if I catch a trout, whether it's a coaster trout uh, or any other kind of a brook trout? There is no way of telling. This is going to be, I think it's going to be in, considered an endangered species, but a brook trout is a brook trout. And again, they are friendly. They will crossbreed. So the Two species again is the Siskowit, which is on Isle Royale, and we think we think that's the most pure brook trout we can find. And the Siskowit spawn in those streams, and the Tobin brook, brook trout spawns in the lake. So basically, those species, uh, when they go back to the lake, then they become a coaster brook trout. They, part of their life is in the lake. And one of the things that. Uh has been studied is of course the kind of trout and the concern in that there's so few of them and uh, if we're uh, canoeing or kayaking along the edge of Lake Superior and we are dragging a spoon or a spinner and we catch a trout if it's a brook trout we probably better play safe and safely release it yes I, I, and they are very rare they are, they are they do exist the actual coaster and yes if you catch 20-inch brook trout, throw it back. Don't, you know, don't mount it or anything else like that. It might be one of our, our last brook trout. Now, some people have done some wonderful things in reconstructing streams that will support these coasters. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, again, I have some pictures of the Brule Sportsman Club, and they started a stream. It's on, off the uh, Brule, which is a famous stream. And it's a tiny one, and basically was small. And when we took it, took the sand down, we can find artifacts from the 1800s. And so that was we're trying to get that back, so the stream can support these trout that spawn. And yeah, it's, it was a club. They got 40 to 50 people. At the, the club itself has 700 members. And part of the summer, they clean these streams up. So we get to, like you said, a tag alder is a, not a good species. And it shows um, what this, they did. Uh, basically, the, the uh, streams for brook trout were nice and clean and everything else, but humans made a big mess of it again. Now we're trying to get it back to where it was in the 1800s. Well, some of those uh, pictures that our viewers are going to see show how those streams have gotten yes. clogged. They don't have the right plants to hold the sand out of the stream. Uh, tag holders are constantly dying and tipping over and clogging the stream. This means that more sand accumulates. If the sand accumulates, there's no gravel for the fish to spawn on. And uh, pretty soon you've got a trickle of yes. real useless water. But boy, it uh, takes a lot of work to reverse that. Are these all volunteers? They're all volunteers. And basically that's what we're trying to get is people working on the Bark River, volunteers. And my plan, I went to the DNR and said, okay, can we do this? Take 2,000 feet of stream and have 10 groups that are going to walk on the stream and get this brush and the tag holders, get that away from the stream and get the gravel down. It's only three, four feet down. I talked to older people that were in the 70s that they did catch a lot of brook trout and they quite sure they were coaster brook trout. Now, you're reconstructing a stream. You you had to have a DNR approval. Any other approvals? Uh, basically, we haven't got that far. Oh, you because, don't? No, and we're trying that right now. And I went to the DNR and said, okay, let's, this is doable and it won't cost you any money. All we need is a supervisor. And right now, I think they're waiting to see about the decision if it's an endangered species. So the stream that we're looking at, the Barker, it's a small stream uh, from here to the wall. And it's all sand now. And basically, when brook trout spawn and the Fingerlings hatch, they have to have food. Right now, you might as well say this is a, a desert for fish. And in February, when they do hatch, they have to have food, and right now there is no food there. I see. And some of those foods for trout uh, uh, are pretty complex, aren't they? Yes, There's a whole yes. cycle of uh, yes. uh, insect larvae yes. and that sort of thing. How, how do you get that recreated, or will that just follow a healthy stream? Well, basically, we go back to the gravel and put the, the logs and the, most of them are cedar, get them down so it's two, three feet of water, and this, they can spawn, and then they should survive until 
they get four to six inches and then go back to the stream and become coasters. How many of these streams really need saving, like the ones you're working on right now, the bark? Lots and lot, and the bark is the easiest. It's only three quarters of a mile from the headwaters down. And yes, I think it's an experiment. We might fail. But even if you fail, you learn something. All right, so that we've identified a species that is endangered. We want some legal protection by a determination yeah. that it's endangered. We want a lot of volunteers who care that the next generation won't have to find out about uh, a coaster brook trout by looking at a book. Yeah, my, my plan was to get 10 groups and 10 to 15 people, not a good, and take 200 feet of stream, and this is your, your stream, and protect it. And it's going to take two or three years, we know that. And after they spawn, and again, I, right now the DNR does not want to stock the coaster brook trout. The Iron River fish hatchery does have them, and they are protected species because they might disappear with bad weather or whatever. So, yeah, basically I think we get these two different species and let them spawn and let them glosh in there and make sure that when they're fingerlings that they will survive until they're five, six years and go back to the lake. Very interesting that we can attempt to reverse yes. what we've done in the last 200 years that yes. totally ruined the, what Mother Nature had for us, isn't and it? Humans are kind of not, uh, they should probably be endangered species too, I guess. <laughs> well, a short short-sighted and profit yes. and greed and uh, just uh, just ignored everything and we've done it with our marshes here in this part of the state uh, we've done it with our river systems by using uh, the rivers as a dumping ground for yes. industrial waste we're kind of slow learners aren't we Alan well I, I, it, it worries me it worries yeah. me well let's take a break because when we come back I want to ask you about a very interesting meeting you've just attended